Hi everyone, I'm so glad you could join me. Today is my soap cleaning, beveling, steaming, wrapping video. <laughs> so what I'm showing you here is that sometimes I use a vegetable cutter. Sometimes I use this little device, which is a planer and a beveler. Now, one thing I can tell you, it is great at beveling, at doing corners, but the planing is not very good. I think it, I think you need a metal blade. This is carved into the loose side, so you're basically cutting with plastic or, well, loose side. The problem with that is that, do you see how it smears on the top there? That's because it's not a clean cut. And so you end up with drag marks on your soap. Now it's great for beveling, you know, for taking off your corners and creating a nice look. Very good at that. But I would have been better off without this device, just using a vegetable cutter. But since I have it, I go ahead and use it for doing my bevels. And I do every edge, at least if there's not a top on the soap. Obviously, if there are flowers or a uh, piped top or something, you couldn't really do the top. But all the other edges, you certainly can. All right. Next step is to steam them. What is the purpose of steaming? Well, it removes the dullness or any ash that you may have on your soap. I generally don't have a problem with ash because I water discount. I rarely have seen ash on any of my soap. But on occasion, and sometimes there may be fingerprints or other imperfections on the soap, and a good steaming can do an awful lot of good. And what's great about it, you don't have to touch the soap. Now, generally, I suggest putting on gloves to do this, just so when it is wet, if you move it or touch it, you don't get fingerprints on it. But for this example, I'm just trying to give you an idea. You can see that steam was so strong, it was actually moving the soap. And I generally do this in a larger number with them standing, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. And what's nice is this really polishes the soap. I'm going to try to uh, turn a light on it so you can see it better. Don't know if that makes any real difference or not. This video camera is just not the best. But there, there you go. You can see some shine on it now. And that's what the steam does. It really does give it a very showy look. And see how those colors are differentiated? differentiated. <laughs> All right, terrific. Now let's wrap these up. Now I already did shrink wrap one. I apologize. I thought the camera was on. But still, I can show you what I did here. Now, these are pretty long and what I have are four by six shrink wrap bags, which work great for average bars of soap, for ones like that, the little square ones, various different shapes. But because these are so long, I had to find a new method. So I still use the little 4x6 bag, but because they are, these soaps are too long for you to actually use the heat sealer on them, I'm going to show you another way. So just gift wrap the end, like so. Hold it with one of your fingers. Take your heat gun. That's my little Martha Stewart one. <laughs> and go around and around until it seals. Then you do your regular wrapping the rest of the way around with your heat gun to get your little shrink wrap bag tight. In just a moment and I will seal up the end there too.
I'm sorry, I didn't realize I had the camera zoomed in as much as I did, so some of this looks like it's off camera, and for that I do apologize. But I will do a better job on this next one of actually showing you. And no, I don't burn my finger. <laughs> I'm very careful. That's what's nice about this little heat gun is that it allows you to get into tight little areas. So, yep, that's my wire uh, heat sealer. But won't we'll work with these. So here's one of the smaller ones. I just wanted to show you the size that works best in this kind of 4x6 heat sealer. This was just an example. So I just it drops right into one of these bags. The same bags that I have these larger ones in. So this is one of my Stars and Stripes soaps. And you can see they wrap right up, they shrink wrap perfectly, uh, it seals easily, no problem. And that's basically what these bags and this heat sealer is actually for. But I did want to show you just that you can find a solution to those difficult problems, sometimes the easiest possible way. And with these tall soaps, really, this was the way that I did that, was by simply using the same bags that I use for my smaller soaps, but modifying the end. And um, again, I'll show you that one more time. I go a little more uh, in detail here, but I'm gonna show you See, it's too long. The bar of soap is too long, so there's not enough of a lip to actually catch and heat seal. So that's why that won't work. But if I do this gift wrapping on the end by folding those in and then folding over, and then using my thumb to hold it in place, it's a breeze. Now, it does leave a little hole right in the center, but I call that a sniff hole. That's one of the problems oftentimes when you do a complete heat wrap is that people can't smell the soap. So this way they can get a whiff of what's inside. That's my story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> So one of the things I do, and I've, everybody does this, but if you heat the little sharp points and then press them down, they are completely smooth, and that way you don't end up with any little plastic knives. Yeah, that's it. See the little, there's a little sniff hole. <laughs> but other than that, this works great. Now I could put these in a bag. I have bags that I can use. I can wrap them in tissue. There's several different ways to do it, but this is using what I have and I just wanted to show that to you. So now let's label these puppies. Now I don't know about you, but I have had a booger of a time printing my round labels. And I've thought about having them printed, but I may change my recipe, so I want to be able to just modify it and print it off myself. Uh, there I put one on there, just to uh, show you what it's going to look like. But some of these, the, the, the middle row right down the center, those always print the best. Then the ones on the side overlap a bit, and I have changed some settings on my printer. You'd never know that I used to be in graphic design. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, but these are just a devil. And it could be because of the company I got them from. I need to talk to them. I'm not blaming them. I just mean maybe it's a setting that I'm not familiar with. So I put my product label on the front which has the company name and the
and the name of the soap, in this case the natural impression. And I've got my little artist on there because impression, impressionism, artist, yeah. <laughs> it might go over some people's heads, I don't know, or maybe it's under mine. And then I put the ingredients on the back and um, these are ready to go. And I have some other clear labels, depending on the type of soap that it is, the kind of packaging, but for this packaging, this is what they get. Just a front and a back label. And I do have some oblong labels that usually for these kind of long bars are used, but these I already had printed out, so I'm using them. Try not to waste anything. Because as you well know, labels can get pricey. So there it is. See the little artist guy painting on his easel? <laughs> Silly, right? Then on the back, there are the ingredients and the address information. See the little acorns? Yeah, from my soapy oaks. So that's it, folks. I appreciate you stopping by. If you have any questions, let me know. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a great day. Goodbye.